Trying to generate pressure from an angry electorate, politicians in D.C. are pressing for a financial overhaul bill that would apply increasing regulation to the banks. The Securities and Exchange Commission has joined the chorus by suing Goldman Sachs for alleged fraud that occurred before TARP, or as we call it, Bush and Obama's transfer of wealth from Main Street to Wall Street. This litigation centers on billionaire John Paulson, who allegedly structured a fraudulent investment product consisting of the now infamous mortgage-backed securities that contributed to the collapse of our financial system. The SEC spokesperson stated about this, quote, Goldman wrongly permitted a client that was betting against the mortgage market to heavily influence which mortgage securities to include in an investment portfolio while telling other investors that securities were selected by an independent objective third party. So in layman's terms, John Paulson and Goldman Sachs, according to the government, created an investment that they knew would fail and they bet against, defrauding investors who were betting the investment would rise in value. Isn't it interesting that the investors that the SEC says Goldman defrauded never sued Goldman? Wasn't the information that the SEC says Goldman should have, ha should have revealed objectively apparent to these investors so that the purchasing banks knew or ought to have known of it? Does a seller need to reveal that another of its clients believes that the item being sold is not worth the value of the sale? Goldman says it lost $90 million on the deal, and the SEC knows that. So what is the SEC accomplishing by seeking disgorgement of profits when there were none? It is establishing a political atmosphere in which it will be easier to enhance government regulations over the financial community. Is it proper for the government to time its litigation in order to advance its legislative agenda? Joining me now is Bill Sardi, journalist and commentator who frequently writes at LewRockwell.com. Bill, thanks for joining us on uh, Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. It is political theater. It is a stage play, and it is all designed to make the president look like the new John Wayne. You just asked all the questions. I mean, is the SEC really going to go after Goldman Sachs when Goldman has given $23 million to politicians over the, the last decade? Come on. You know, in your, in your piece on, uh, in LewRockwell.com, you actually took it a step further than that and not, not only questioned the sincerity of the SEC in going after Goldman Sachs, but you questioned the sincerity of Goldman Sachs resisting the SEC. T tell us what your theory is about why Goldman Sachs might actually want to cave. Certainly that you saw the public survey, eight in ten Americans believe government's not working in their best interest. The public is upset. There has to be a fall guy. There has to be a villain. And the administration in Washington, D.C., regardless of the facts in this case, has to look good. Do you think Goldman Sachs wants to continue to bury itself by defending itself in front of the public? Do you think it wants to destroy the image of Wall Street? No, it wants to be the fall guy for the, the White House to make them look good and get this legislation passed. It's a favor. So, so Goldman Sachs will, will hold up its hands and say, OK, regulate us. And by the way, what do we owe you for these uh, fake uh, deals that we sold uh, in 2007? And then we'll just go on about our business without the government breathing down our necks. Well, government's acting like the mafia here. Every crime is OK as long as we cut in the government for a penalty. Now, who was harmed here? apparently a couple of overseas banks, why aren't they getting the proposed penalty? And you brought this up. I mean, who was harmed? And what is government doing getting in the way of this? The timing of it is uncanny. The SEC had this case for three years, didn't do anything with it. You saw Gregory Zuckerman there, the New York Times reporter, had the time to write a whole book about this and publish it last November. No, nothing said, no big roust about in Wall Street un until, of course, this gets in the news now. All right, so people know what we're talking about. These instruments were sold by Goldman Sachs in 2007. 
That was the, uh, the second to last year of the Bush administration. We were not yet in the recession. Henry Paulson had not yet come to George W. Bush with scribblings on the back of a napkin saying, I need $700 billion tomorrow, otherwise the sky would fall. Question, why is the SEC going after these people now? If these banks lost uh, tens of, of millions of dollars, why didn't the banks sue Goldman Sachs unless these banks sell the same type of instruments themselves, Bill? Well, of course, and, you know, is, they have said, well, the, the SEC has a weak case because they're only filing a civil suit rather than a criminal case. Well, right. sure, we see this differently as they're just trying to slap them on the hands. They're not trying to put them in jail. Anything short of jail is not a penalty. We know this. It's well, just a payback, and, and they're, you know, the bloggers online, it's interesting to read them because some of them are a cubicle away from this whole event. The, the, the thing that, that galls me is when, well, well, why does the government do things for individuals that they should do? If, if these two banks, whether they're foreign banks or American banks, one of them I think was owned by the former LaSalle Bank of Chicago, which has since been bought by one of the other big ones. If they were harmed, why didn't they sue Goldman Sachs? Why is it, as you say, the government will sue, Goldman will cave, and the government will get the cash? This compounds the harm, if any, that Goldman visited on these banks. It doesn't make the victim whole. It just gives the government more money to, with which to spend and regulate. Look, look the, the whole case is going to, you know, reveal a soft underbelly and some of the, uh, you know, mechanisms that Goldman uses that are nefarious behind the scenes. And there are some of those things. That doesn't necessarily prove guilt here. It does say, look, the public's not going to have any confidence in Wall Street when all this gets aired out. And the penalty, I guess the public will feel that their anger is resolved here. But it isn't. And this isn't the way to do this. Um, when we look on the FDA side, here's the FDA giving out big penalties to Pfizer, $2.3 billion, for things they did wrong that ended up in people dying and being harmed. Government takes the penalty. We're not compensating those who are harmed. The government is acting as mafia. Give me a cut. Make me look good. And it's okay that the little people got destroyed in this thing. Should, should we expect any more shoes to drop as the president attempts to create an atmosphere among the public, which will make it easy for him to pick off three or four Republican senators so he doesn't have to worry about a filibuster uh, of Chris Dodd's monumental monstrosity that wants to regulate the financial community? Oh, it's a great question. They've got all 41 Republican se senators uh, out there on a limb, and they're trying to saw them off. They oppose the legislation because they don't want any more bailouts, which is rational, which is okay for a, an opposing party. And now they want to make them look like fools for opposing, which is going to end up to be a billion-dollar uh, hand around the neck of a company to extract a billion dollars, which doesn't solve anything. And it doesn't fix what's going on here. These, these instruments that Paulson invented really are questionable, and a couple of banks turned them down, and a couple of banks here went for this. We have no explanation from their side, the European side. Why did they go for these investments? Yeah, and, and you know what? When Goldman settles this case for pennies on the dollar rather than litigates it to the hilt. And as a result of that settlement, we will never find out the answer to your question. Bill Sardi, thank you for joining us on Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. You can catch today's show on foxnews.com slash Freedom Watch and on Sirius 145 XM 168 or online at foxnewstalk.com at 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. From New York, defending freedom. Until the next time, stay free, America.